a name for me? David Els. We have great audio. And again, you don't even have to look at the camera. You can just okay. look right at me. Okay. Um, okay, so just a couple quick things. Correct me if I'm wrong. David Els running for 3rd District Congress, correct? As correct. Member. Correct. Okay. Why are you running? Well, two years ago, they asked, contacted me and asked me to run, Jane Clem and Paul Theobald did. And then I first said no because I've never dreamed of running for Congress. Then I seen the ag prices were in the tank for four years because I'm a farmer too. And I thought I need to get up there and tell Donald Trump what he's doing is not working, that we need to set, export our commodities, not get subsidies from the government and all of us farmers would rather sell our grain than have subsidies all the time so and plus we make way more money like corn I just sold corn for seven ninety seven almost eight dollars and the previous administration you'd be lucky to get three fifty a bushel for it so everything's going good with Tom Vilsack for the agriculture on cattle and everything one thing about cattle though, we need to break up the three big or four big major packing plants and make more smaller packing plants so there's more competition because uh, while us farmers are getting gouged on this end for low prices, the consumers are getting gouged in the grocery stores for high prices for beef and pork and the Packers are making record profits and there's got to be something to stop that, you know, so the consumers don't have to pay so much for it in the stores and us farmers get paid more on this end because why should the Packers always make all the huge profits while the rest of us are just barely getting by. And also, you want me to say something else? Yeah, go ahead. Also, the reason why I'm running is because I gave my daughter a kidney and then so did my wife three years later. And we met so many people in the hospital at UNMC in Omaha who lost everything, but this was before the Affordable Care Act. And there was a lot of women mostly that would cry and say that they were losing their house, they were losing everything because of, they lost their job to be there with their sick child. and. The previous administration keeps saying they were going to take away the affordable health care and like my daughter has her anti-rejection meds are three thousand dollars a month and people with cancer and so on would simply die without it so I thought I gotta get up there and stop that because we should all have health care in America the richest country in the world and we've had 13 foreign exchange students live with us and they all say the same thing that why do we have free health care and you're the richest country in the world and don't have health care. So that was another reason why I wanted to run for Congress to make the Affordable Health or ACA even better than what it is, you know, so which it's a lot better than nothing. Believe me, we know, so. Yeah, very interesting. Lots of really great points. Um, let me just... Okay, yeah, um, lots of great points and a great answer to that question. Um, sorry, a little windy. Um, okay, now you're running as a Democrat, and obviously you're, you have several other opponents, but the main one being Adrian Smith, who has won every year since 2006. What leads you to believe that this is the year for change? Well, I was born and raised a Republican, and and I still have Republican in my blood, you know, but it, this one it seems like the Republicans are losing their moral values the more time goes on. And when they said they were going to take away Obamacare because it was a disaster when it wasn't, I just thought they're against abortion, which I was too. But it seems like they don't care about the child once it's born and sick, you know, that how can you turn your back on a sick child or someone dying of cancer or whatever. So seems how I've been born and raised here and I farmed my whole life. I think the Republicans will vote for me in the third district because they know me 
as a person and know my values and I just think that I can represent them better than Adrian Smith has because it doesn't seem like he does much but follow the crowd, you know, so. Sure, yeah, sorry, I keep looking down. I wrote down questions, so I make sure that I hit all of the important points. Um, okay, now talk to me about some of the biggest issues you see facing both the state and the nation. The biggest issue I see, well, well right now is the drought. <laughs> but for us farmers, that's the one thing on our head. But, but inflation really is a concern of everybody right now. But people got to stop and realize that when the previous administration put the tariff tax against China that destroyed all of our ag prices, Donald Trump said he wasn't going to put it in the tariff tax into play until after Christmas in 2020 so people could get their Christmas gifts bought at a cheaper price. So it went into went into act in 2021, so that's 20 to 30 percent of the inflation right there. Then he also redid NAFTA and put a tariff tax against Canada and that made lumber prices go up also, so that's one of the reasons why it's, then, all, then it's part of the inflation is because the economy is going booming again because of COVID is over with, you know, and stuff. And as far as the gas price, which is a big concern, but the ethanol plant told me a year ago when I was selling corn for nearly $8, we got to have 40 cents a gallon more on gas or we'd have to shut all the ethanol plants down. So that accounted for 40 cents a gallon of it because as farmers were finally getting paid what we should have been paid for our corn and that was eight dollars a bushel instead of three like it was for four years before that and we were all about to go bankrupt before that i think 2400 dairy farmers went bankrupt in wisconsin alone in the four years under the last administration so we needed change big time there so and we need to get the price gouging of fertilizer and there's no reason for gas to be as high as it is when we only get three percent of our oil from russia and we've cranked up that much production if not more and now biden's gonna do the 15 percent ethanol year round that should offset the three percent at least five times over so it's just price gouging is why it's gas is so high now so, I think they should do something to eliminate that <coughs> in Washington. That is. Sure. Yeah, you've hit. Um, and then, a lot of and then as far as the state of Nebraska, we all talk about the property tax, but and I would always argue with our governor about that on his call-in show, and told him that how comes all the other states. Well, I told him, you promised to get down property tax, and you never do. And he said, well, no governor can do that. And it's your local, local schools, he always blamed it on. And I said, well, how come Iowa, Kansas, South Dakota, and Wyoming have half the property tax we do? What, they don't have schools in their states? They all have schools, and if they can do it, we can do it. So we should contact all the other states and see how they do it, that their property tax isn't double like ours is here in Nebraska, so, and take the best of each one of those and work with it. Yeah, sure, and you've hit a lot of different topics, and we'll take a little deeper dive into that um, in just a moment. What would you say your main issue that you're running on is? Of all the ones you just named. <laughs> <laughs> Health care and saving agriculture. I also think we need to get more younger farmers into ag or interested into ag, but how can a young farmer get started up nowadays when land brings $10,000 an acre, like $1 million for what, one quarter with a pivot on it that goes on it? How can a young farmer ever pay for that? And a tractor costing 300000 and a coal mine 500000 So I think we should have government grants that help at least pay the down payment for a young farmer that wants to start farming. Because most farmers are my age or older, and in another 10 years, half of us are probably going to be gone. So who's going to feed this nation 
And is it going to be all mega corporate farmers? And if it is, they will control the price of all of the food and ag products. And people think food is high now. Wait until that happens, because they'll really be paying a lot for food then. So we really need to get the youth back into agriculture. So. Sure, yeah. And, you know, you mentioned farmers your age. That's what, 35? <laughs> right? You guys aren't no. that old, right? Only 35? <laughs> no. uh, okay. I, now talk to me I wish. Little... I feel like I'm 35. but That's the most important part. Right? <laughs> uh, all right. Talk to me about, um, I know you mentioned um, some of these national issues, but talk to me about your viewpoint on the whole situation in Russia and Ukraine. What are your thoughts on that? I, I'm really saddened about Russia taking over the Ukraine and I wish the previous administration would have done more to stand up to Putin because it's almost like Putin and Trump were buddies. But, and I also thought that Biden should have probably... I'm one to never start a war and I think we need to stop policing the world but it seems like if we would have bombed them before they went into the Ukraine, that would have stopped it. But then it also, I understand Biden's point that it would have started World War III and we didn't want that. So it's a hard, it's a difficult place to be in. But it seems like the whole world could have helped the Ukraine more than what they did. It seems to me like anyway. But. <clears throat> But then other small countries have been taken over like that before and we just turn our backs on them. So, and they're countries of color instead of, you know, white people. So it seems, sometimes I feel like we're helping Ukraine more because they're white instead of people of color. But that's just my opinion though. But, but I, I really think we should have done more than what we did, though, so, to help them. Yeah, very interesting points, like you mentioned. It's definitely yeah. kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place right now. Yeah. Um, now, you also mentioned this earlier, um, the topic of abortion. Talk to me about your viewpoints on that, specifically Roe versus Wade. Yeah, see, I have, a, I have four kids, and three of them are handicapped. And the first one is born healthy and then the second one was one of spina bifida, the daughter that had two kidney transplants that me and my wife both gave a kidney to. And then when we had the third one, when we got pregnant with her, even though she was on birth control, the doctor suggested that we get an abortion. And so we had several churches pray about it and they all told us not to get the abortion, that they'll be there to help us and we're still waiting for even a phone call to help us. But she was born with Creedershaw syndrome. And, but we didn't want to get an abortion either. We just didn't want our child to suffer its whole life like it has. And, and that's my point about people saying that uh, don't get the abortion, but then once the child is born, there's nowhere around to help you with it. And, that, it, that was so much pain for all of us to see her crying all the time and going through all of surgeries. And, and uh, sometimes, I think, in cases like that, but we would have never got the abortion. But I think people have the right to decide for themselves, you know, whether they should get an abortion or not. But I also think they should make adoption a lot easier because my sister tried to adopt a child and spent over $30,000 and still didn't get a child. And if they would make that easier, connect the mother with the families, you know, and not cost so much, that would help a lot of abortions. But I think it's a woman's right to choose, but I think they should also have classes to help her, you know, dis you know show her the, the negative of an abortion too. Personally, myself, I would never get an abortion, but I still think it's a woman's right to choose, though. So, so I guess that's where I stand on that. Sure, very good points. I'm actually adopted myself, so. Really? <laughs> I am. I've, I'm adopted from Vietnam. My parents yeah, are from Vietnam, yeah. so, so yeah. a little different. Um, okay, and now I know you touched on this, and um, 
just a couple minutes ago, but that year-round E15 ethanol fuel sales, which uh, President Biden just signed off on, Yeah. do you agree with that? Do you think that that's the best choice right now? Yes, I do. Remember, like three years ago, maybe four, uh, President Trump gave waivers to the big oil companies so they didn't have to blend ethanol, and that made the price of corn go down 60 cents a bushel in one week. So this is not only helping the price of gas to go down for the consumer, and also making our corn prices at least stay where they are or even go higher, which is great news for farmers. So yes, that's a win-win situation, I'd say. Sure, now if elected, I mean, these are all very hot topics right now, especially, you know, in Washington and throughout the state. How yeah. do you plan on combating them and solving some of these issues like abortion, the E-15 sales, and as well as Russia and Ukraine? Uh, Russia and Ukraine, that's a hard one. <laughs> I don't envy Biden and that administration now dealing with that because that's, that's a tough one. But the abortion thing, I think we should, uh, the issue with abortion, I think, like I said before, we should get more free clinics to help people with birth control and, and uh, to help mothers line up with parents that are looking for a baby without charging a lot of money, you know, that would help too, and get a good family, not just any family. And then the, what was the other question? Um, just how you plan to combat all of these issues oh, and how oh. to solve them, including the E-15. I think that's the only one you haven't touched on yet. Uh, yeah, and the E-15, um, I think that's great, and we should keep on with the E-15, because that's helped us, our corn prices so much, and and uh, when I get to Washington, I want to just, I'm a, just an everyday person like everybody, like you and everybody here in Nebraska. I'm not a politician, but I promised uh, I've been through two farm sales. I went bankrupt and came back from that. And well, all these medical expenses and we've conquered all of that. So I know how to fight and balance a budget. and. I also had a dairy farm for 22 years, and the only time I had off is when I gave my daughter a kidney, so I know what hard work's all about. Going to Washington would be a piece of cake to that. And I may not be the fanciest talker, but I know how to get things done, and I promise to fight for everybody, the people working in the packing plants, the people working in the factories, the nurses, the teachers, the police, everybody, I promise to listen to everybody and get their ideas and take it back to Washington and not just the wealthy people because it seems like the wealthy control everything and I will not take lobbyist money so if I win don't come at me with lobbyist money because that just rubs me the wrong way. So. Okay. I get spam calls all the time. Yeah. I have one more final question for you, and we'll wrap things up because it's very windy and a little chilly out here. Yeah. Um, as we head closer to that May 10th election day, which is in just less than a month, if you had a message to say to the voters, what would it be? I would say, please vote for me. You won't be sorry. I will do my best to represent Nebraskans all of Nebraskans, not just farmers. I know I'm in agriculture, so that's where my heart is, but I will join all of you and I'll make as many stops as I can when I come back from Washington to listen to everyone to see what's working and what's not working and go back to Washington and work on that issue and to keep health care going, the Affordable Care Act, and even make it better in some cases, more affordable yet. Most of it's all right right now though. But, and I just promise you I'll do the best I can. So. Sure, that is all the questions I have for you. Is there anything else that you would like to add today? No, I think that's it. Perfect, thank you so much.